الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد وقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكمه الكتاب الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي عصر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم وفي عن عبد بن ليمون رضي الله عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لرجل تبتلي خمسا قبل خمس حياتك قبل موتك وقراءتك قبل شرك وغناك قبل فقرك وشفاعتك قبل هرمك وصحتك قبل سقرك او كما قال علي بن عبد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد It is a great mercy and ni'ma and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity and most importantly the tawfiq to spend our time that we can spare for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in learning, in benefiting, in spiritually reviving our hearts and our states of iman by coming to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the words of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The best of places on the surface of this earth are the homes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And today we are also in the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, doing the best of action that can possibly be done, and that is remembering Allah Azza wa Jal and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept our gathering. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept our coming. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow our hearts to be illuminated by the words of the Quran and by the Sunnah. the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أمين الله العالمين. As we are on the verse of the 2024, a new year is about to dawn upon us. A time when we are getting closer to being our last, with a foot in our graves. As we follow the light of the time where every person, businessmen, people with productivity or who look forward to progressing in their different respective fields. They also go about and make sure that they analyze and see how this year was spent. And the most successful individuals are those who take this opportunity to set some goals for themselves for the year. And so you have people in different fields who will set some goals for themselves of what I want to do for this year. A person who is academically inclined will say, these are 12 books, 10 books, that I want to finish in this year. A person who is into fitness and wellness, he will say, I can finish this much right now. My goal for the end of next year is to get to this point. A person who is in some sort of sports will say, today I'm not a starter, I'm a bench player. But my goal for next year is to be a starter on my team. And whatever other sports it might be, for our pickleball fanatics, today we are 3.5, 4.0 players. Tomorrow you want to excel and you want to be a 5.0 player. And these are different goals, and these are good goals. These are all good goals because they are not going against the Sharia or the ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or rather, they are encouraging good things, inshallah ta'ala, which is a good, something to look forward to, and something to really be proud of, that alhamdulillah, I have these good goals. But the same way we set goals for our worldly affairs, the same way we set goals for our physical well-being, we must also set goals for our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our spiritual well-being. There is a spiritual connection and aspect that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single Muslim has, every single person who testifies and believes that there is no God but Allah. He believes that there is a Allah. He believes that Allah is a provider. He believes that Allah is a sustainer. He believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being everything. It is a time where we must see and analyze 
How high am I in that belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much do I really, how much can I really trust myself to put the faith in Allah Azza wa Jal? To trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make things happen for me? To trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when I choose the way of Allah, Allah will open doors for me. <coughs> the verse of Surah Talaq is very important in this regard. <coughs> When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by one individual who had lost everything. He had lost his child, he had lost his wealth, and he was literally in the verge of financial problems and he was in a very bad situation. He comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, this is my situation. And you are well aware of what my situation is, as you are the Sufra and the Messenger of Allah. Tell me something by which I can be removed and this calamity can be removed from me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells this person to recite, La hawla wa la quwata illa illa. And then tells him the verse, Wa man yitta illaha wa yaja'ala ku ma khajra wa yawazukhu min haysu la yahtasib min haysu la yahtasib. Wa man yitta wakil ala Allahi fa huwa hasbu. That there are certain qualities that you need to keep in your life and maintain in your life that by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alleviate your troubles and your problems and your calamities. He says, number one, the said, Alhamdulillah, Number two, fear and be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your day to day life. Number three, Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stop thinking that your job is going to save you. It is not your job that provides for you, it is Allah who provides for you. <coughs> Fix your understanding of Allah. <coughs> because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become sufficient for you. So the Sahabi returns back home and he recites, he just begins reciting, He tells his wife, you do the same as well. When he hears someone knock on the door, someone knocks on the door. The Sahabi opens the door and he sees his son all grown up standing in front of him. He said, Allah. But then he remembers, I asked for two things. I was missing two things. I was missing my son, and I was also missing my bow. And the son then tells him, Oh my father, I'm also coming with this uh, herd of sheep and goats. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed me with it. The Sahabi had this, he started to say, La hurra wa la hurra wa la hurra wa just adhering to the words and the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our next year should also have goals. Goals of what we want to accomplish, not just financially or in our education field, wherever respective field we might be in, but religiously we might we must also have a goal of what do I want to accomplish in this year of 2024? What is my goals that I can set of memorizing the Quran? What surah is am I missing in my life? From the surah that are recited or supposed to be recited every single day, such as Surah Yasin. Surah Baqi'ah, Surah Mul. Which one of these surahs can I really double down on in this year of 2024? Even if it's just one surah, even if it's a smaller surah, what is one surah that I can set for myself that in this year I am going to memorize this surah? There was a person in the second century of after migration of the Prophet A.S. was a very great, noble, religious, educationally blessed with the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an individual by the name of Abdullah ibn Mubarak Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Mubarak Rahimahullah Ta'ala was born in the beginning of the second century, meaning the after the 100, he was born after, just at the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sahaba were almost completely gone. You know, Sahaba basically had returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this time. One or two, maybe very few of them are actually alive at this point. Abdullah ibn Mubarak ta'ala was a person though whose life began in a way that wasn't so easy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Mubarak was blessed with a lot of love. And he was had a lot of vacation homes as well. 
So it was very customary for them that when they had a gathering, Abdullah ibn Mubarak did not invite his friends in his home in the city. But rather, he would have a sitting at a huge gathering outside the city in one of his vacation homes. So one time, Abdullah ibn Mubarak called his friends over, and they were having a great time. There was music, alcohol, this, that, a bunch of things going on. And everyone is just going crazy. Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a person who was not only into music, but he also played awbah. Awbah was an instrument, a musical instrument, that he was actually really good at. And so he says, or someone that reading the story, he says, Abdullah ibn Mubarak was not so crazy at that time, drinking alcohol, consuming alcohol, and kind of passed out and fell asleep. Upon waking up, he noticed that his Allah, his musical instrument, had broken. And so he was also very good with his hands. So he begins to fix it. As he's fixing it, I think there's a final law, very chosen people get signs like this. He hears the verse of the Quran, Has the time not come for the believers that their hearts tremble for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh, Abdullah, you live your life. How much more are you going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much more are you going to continue living like this? Or oh, Abdullah, has the time not come for you to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much more are you going to continue to disobey Allah? Abdullah ibn Mubarak, upon hearing the verse of the Quran, he said, Bala qud'an, bala qud'an, bala qud'an. Most definitely the time has come, most definitely the time has come. His heart was filled with guilt with embarrassment, shy to even hold his hand up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he makes so much to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I am done. I'm done living my life like this. Ya Allah, I disobeyed you enough. So Abdullah ibn Mubarak from that point on, it just changed his life and became a good person. That was not enough for him. Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a very successful man when he was doing there in the worldly matters. Now he transpired and changed that same attitude in the religious gatherings. So much so that if you look at the books of Hadith, the Sihah Hasidah in particular, i.e., Imam Bukhari's Muslim, the Sahih, the Sahih of Imam Muslim, the Sunnah of Imam Abu Dawood, the Sunnah of Imam Tibet, the Mubarak of Imam Ali. The Sunnah of Imam Ibn Ajah. You look at these books of Ali, a golden chain or a very good chain of narration is when the name of Abdullah ibn Mubarak is in that chain. Abdullah ibn Mubarak is the teacher of Imam Bukhari, is the teacher of Imam Muslim, is the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa. That is how this man changed his life. There was a time. When in the time in the reign of Harun Rashid, the famous king, he was he says one time we were sitting, I was sitting with my family, and from the outside of the wall we heard a big bowl, we heard a scream. And so Harun Rashid the king says, I got really worried because maybe the enemy is attacking us. So he quickly sends someone out to inquire what was that noise. They come back. His wife got me sitting right next to him. He said, well, it was Abdullah ibn Mubarak. So they go and see what happened. They see that Abdullah ibn Mubarak had sneezed. Alhamdulillah. And then everyone replied, Alhamdulillah. The crowd was so big and so large in favor of Abdullah ibn Mubarak that it sounded as if something crazy happened. It was just the thousands and thousands and thousands of people waiting to hear a single hadith of Allah and Mubarak, Rahmatullah Ta'ala. Alam yaki lila ila amal and asha'a kurubum yaitila. In the hearts of the believers, did the time not come yet 
for their hearts to tranquil and to really humble themselves for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the remembrance and reminding of Abu Alayhi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same man, Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala, has a book of hadith. Right, he was living a very luxurious life, and now he started living a life of sort of abstinence from the world. And so he has a very famous book. In this book, he brings the very first hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he's brought his name into one of the dead. Meaning, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which are very small, but impact and contain a lot of meaning. The first hadith in his book, he brings, There are things that that people are completely deceived about. People are in deception about these two uh, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are as-sihra, help, with all time. Two blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person thinks is in complete deception about. The young will say, I still have time. The old will say, I still have time. Person who's healthy, I'm, I'm, I'm good right now. I'm still young, I'm still this, I, I don't have any problems, I do this, I do that. My health is good. Until they are hit with something, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. But if a person is stuck or struck by some sort of physical calamity, some sort of health problem, that's when this person starts realizing, no, I took it all for granted. The Prophet sallallahu was saying, teaching us, take benefit of five things before five alternatives hit you. Ibn Khamsan qabla Khamsan. Number one, shabab al qabla hawne. Take advantage of your youth, of your time when you have the chance to actually move and do something. You're young, you have power, you have ability, you have strength. How are you using it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Person might say, one. Lifting weights. I'm doing this. I'm, le- I'm running in a marathon. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Ask this person to lift that blanket off your head at the time of the Strength is useless. No strength. Shabbat the Allah. Using that strength, using that youth, in learning the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in serving the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you won't always be able to do it. There will come a time where you can't do it the same way. Earlier this year, if you remember, I went to, I had to make a sudden trip to Canada to pray a Janaza of the founder of our institute in Buffalo, New York. Um, and subhanAllah, this man lived 83, 84 years of subhanAllah, very good life, mashallah. So just recently, when I was there this past weekend, just visiting, I asked my teacher, you know, what was his routine at night? Because it's, it's one thing about the people who are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have a very unique habit of how they spend their night, especially the last portion of it. He says, so the very end, he would get up two hours before for the salah. Two hours before for the salah, he would get up and he would do his tadiyah, he would do his tahajjud, he would do his Quran, and all his daily routine were packed in that two hours that he said, I'm going to do it. This is my time where nobody else can bother me. This is my time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a time I've dedicated that doesn't matter what happens, nobody's bothering me in these two hours. The rest of the day, you can have a salah, you can have this and that. But these two hours, nobody's messing with me. Imagine how many of us have the inspired we want, we have that motivation that we want to learn the school of the Quran. We want to learn some sort of 50 masai, we want to learn Qahal, we want to learn Salah. But we aren't able to. And it's not because we don't have time. It's because we don't have schedules. You have to schedule that work. And if you don't do it, there's accountability. Either you'll get you'll be told once, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you this done? You can't meet your deadline. Or you'll be told to go find another job. There's accountability. And you're allowed to lose your job, so you're going to make sure that you're on top of your game. 
you're going to meet your deadlines, you're going to try your best, and if you did it, there's going to be a valid excuse, and you can't just say, my dog ate my homework. These excuses won't work. So now you have to come up with proper valid reasons if you don't meet your deadline. But when it comes to the religious aspect, if I miss my Quran recitation today, uh, if I miss my daily business that I was supposed to recite subhanAllah a hundred times today, or recite salutation about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hundred times today, if I missed it, oh well. There's a person I know. Marshall has a very great recitation habit. Every single day, you will naturally just be dressed for recitation of Quran. Then I ask what happens when you miss it, because there's going to be a day where you're definitely going to miss it. You know, I guess there was a time that I was behind by 15 drugs. I just had some wedding, had some this, had some that, because of it, I just didn't get a chance to read my daily dress 3333. So I missed five days. I had 315, so I was behind by 15 drugs. The person says, I fortunately had to travel somewhere. The traveling was a few hours. So he said, I started my travel with Elif Dabim, I finished my travel with finishing Surah so Al-Gahab. 15 drugs. Making it up. And that's how we have to treat our religious aspects, our religious kids, the dedication that we need to send for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when you have a schedule, this is what I'm going to do every single day. It doesn't have to be a lot. Now, Allah wa ta'ala khayru mimma tathra wa alha. Small but consistent is better than a lot if you only do it one or two times. Every single day, dedicate five minutes. And these are my five minutes, my phone is away from me, my phone is on airplane mode if you have to use it, for recitation of Quran, whatever it is, but making sure that this is my time dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not taking anything at this time. It's just one-on-one -on -one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not talking about the Quran, I'm not talking about the Quran, that's the time that you have to get. We're talking about time that you want to get. Five minutes that you don't have to give it, but you want to give it now. This is excluding the time that we have for our salawat. This is just one and one time with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah to see what I'm dedicating to you. Let it be five minutes, let it be ten minutes, let it be fifteen minutes. The problem is everyone wants to be the ideal Muslim and say, I want to dedicate one hour. And so a person will be able to dedicate that one hour the first day, the second day, the third day is thirty minutes, the fourth day is five minutes, the fifth day is five minutes. So it's better to start small and then make your gradually make your way up to that one hour ideal Muslim or whatever it might be. But don't come with an entire that I'm going to do everything every single day because we're going to burn out. Naturally, we're going to burn out and we're not going to be able to sustain that good that we will be pleased to uh, want to begin with or we want to continue with. Inshallah, brothers that are coming, uh, there's space in the basement as well and there are great screens down there as well. So, inshallah, you're not missing out on anything. So if you don't find space, uh, by all means, there's plenty of space in the basement. You can travel out and make your way there. And travel out and you'll be able to find sufficient space there. So going back to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that take benefit and advantage of five things before you five alternatives in a person. Number one, shabab al al hawane Take advantage of your youth before old age hits you and you're not able to do the same thing that you wanted before. When you get older, you're no longer able to stand in salah longer. You're no longer able to fast the same way. You're no longer able to sit down the same way that you were before. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminding us, take advantage of your youth. And spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Shabab wa taqbala muhammad. Wa sahada wa taqbala sahamid. Take advantage of your good health. That when a person is healthy, they're able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very relaxed and comfortable manner. But when a person is sick, when they're going through some sort of problem, let it be physical, let it be mental, whatever it is, a person no longer has that same drive. So at least when we are good, which is majority of the time for most of us, alhamdulillah, take advantage of that time, because sometimes there are sicknesses because of which you can no longer even do certain things. You're in a certain state of diabetes, you're no, you're no longer able to pass the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have certain problems, you're no longer able to even pray for a certain amount of time. This will not have to be short. 
که دست هست بیشو که دن هست بیشو این یه نه که در رو هلو باقی نه در قابل خواهی when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a person in a financially good situation Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says take advantage of that that Allah has blessed you use that in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spare some time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is an advantage you have the sake that Allah has given it to you it can be taken away and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says wa fawaw wa taqala ya shawdik Take advantage of the free time that you have over the time, before the time comes that you're going to be very occupied. The young ones might think that I have a lot of time today and it's going to continue till the end of my life. The reality is every next day is more busier than the one before that. Today a person is single, tomorrow they are married, the day after that they have children, the day after that they have grandchildren. You're not finding time. You're not going to find time then. But if a person has time dedicated already, one hour here, one hour there, every single day, one hour. Or whatever time that is allocated for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to finish our is to make sure that whatever I want, I'm dedicated on doing, I spend that time, making sure we take out that time every single day. Because you're not going to all of a sudden be able to do it. And last, the Prophet of the Malik, the Prophet said, Allah, my younger son, he says, Take advantage of your life before you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every single person will have regrets. The best will be those who will have regrets in Jannah, remember they're in Jannah, they will say, I wish I spent more time with Sadiq subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish I had decided more subhanahu wa So my race in Jannah would have been higher. That's not a good regret. Imagine a person in Jahannam. The person in the fire of hell, he's saying, my regret is, I wish I lived a better life. I wish I had changed my life when it was time. I wish I had come to the masjid more often. I wish I had connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more often. My situation would not be the way it is today. I would not be in the pits of the fire of Jahannam today. Remember, the people who are given the book of beats in their right hand, they're happy about it. Yeah, Allah, give it to me. I'm ready for it. You live this with life in joy. Everything is yours. The person who's given the book of beats in their left hand, this person is doomed. He said, I wish I had not even been given my results. So, like that says, you will see that disbelievers, not that it's the simple people, which we may have even be scared to even look inside. And sometimes you don't have to be a good or bad in your exam. You don't want to see the results. You want to give someone else to tell me what I got. That's what this situation scenario is. That people don't want to look inside. Finally, when they look inside the book of peace, man, we have a good job. What is wrong with this book? It is so strange. I understand there are some things I did very obvious. Bad things. Okay, this book had never did that as well. That for sure. But what's up with it? Even wrote down the bad stuff that was very small. You and I don't even consider it to be wrong with this book right now. Now you want to be so big of them when I can be wrong? In that every single one that I did. Every single wrong is right now. So it wasn't kind of what I was talking about, not my idea, it was never like this. Over and over again. I led up to this. There was one time a person who had a dialogue with the angel of death. The angel of death, he tells this angel of death, you know, I don't get your situation, I don't get what you do. He goes, that said, what's wrong? He says, you know, in the worldly court, we have a system that when a person does something wrong, you send them a notice that, hey, you did something wrong, and you have such and such amount of time to rectify the situation. If your auditor had some rust on it, 
and get a notice, you have 15 days to pay it over, or else 25 days a day. $25 a day will be charged. Oh, and notice is given. But you just know all of a sudden. You don't give us any reminders that you're coming, and boom, time for you to leave. And you know what that says. That's not true. I give you actually more reminders than anyone else. The person says, how so? He says, you get a fever. It's not a reminder. Because you're on a deep line. Switch. The switch. You get gray hair. It's just kind of good thing. You, you get gray hair or you even begin to lose your hair. That's my reminder. You are blessed with children. That's my reminder. You are blessed with grandchildren. That's my reminder. That's the same way I'm like, here's life, less time with that also. Takes life. These are all my reminders throughout your life. I gave you reminders. But the problem is, you were never ready. You were never awake to actually be heed these reminders, to take benefit and advantage of these reminders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us all to be people who are going to be from dying to the Kalkiri and the Kalkiri. That's when we are getting older and we are seeing 2024 a few days away, that we are individuals who take signs and who take lessons from this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to live 2024 and make it the best year of our lives with our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our religious aspect and with our status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May it be the best of years for us, even though we might see the calamities and problems that are going on with our Muslim brothers and sisters across the world. But definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. Allah is the best of planet, and that was subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed 2024 to be the best of years for our life. Jazakum Allah khayr. Abdul Rahman. Alhamdulillah.
رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhin أنت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي